Hi folks, it's Dragon. We're back again. Uh, we're just having a look at the um, steel frame that Steve's made uh, for the support of these shelters. Uh, we're currently looking at one of the welding uh, joints that Steve did on the, on the um, container to hold it down to the frame, as you mentioned uh, before, and uh, where these uh, containers uh, cross these points, they're all welded down, so uh, they're not going to move anywhere. Um, change are another option, but um, you know, I think welding is, is probably a lot better. Um, so um, if we can have a look underneath and Steve can give us a bit of a run through. Okay. If you look at the um, the far corner post, it's it's only protruding into the ground about 300 mil. Now that post is set into the in concrete into the ground on footings of of 1.5 meters deep. Um, so if you look around to the left hand side here you can see I've already started to put some bracing in there so this end bay when I'm finished I'll have it totally braced um, across the container and in the front as well to make that a solid box um, so with the highest part of the container braced there and the corner being only protruding out of the ground a little way you know that's definitely going to take um, it'll just make it a totally solid structure um, and as I said there's with the wind that we've had even as it is now um, there's very little movement there and that's good yeah the, the bracing will stop the the, the sort of the swaying effect uh, on, the, on the platform you know, itself wouldn't it? yeah well, well dragon it doesn't we don't get that much movement <laughs> we do get a um, I guess if you get lumping around on the deck jumping up and down there you can feel there's a little bit of spring there yeah particularly with the the ensuite sitting on the deck at the moment but uh, um, yeah look it's um, we've had some you know some se severe wind gusts here because we're in a high wind area and yeah I'm pretty happy with the way it's all panned out it's uh, that's good you know, it's not even finished but yeah it's, particularly uh, this time of year we get uh, very severe storms through here it seems yeah. to be a part of life <laughs> in yep. this area so absolutely yeah so uh, that's good and steve i've noticed that you put windows uh in the side of this container um i understand that um it does uh, alter the structural integrity of, of the walls uh, when you start cutting um, Absolutely. When you, I guess, you look at the strengths of the walls is in is in the, the crimp, if you like, a bit like corrugated iron. Um, once you cut that out, there's definitely movement in the walls. Yep. Um, so what I did with the windows, um, I put the the timber reveals around and, and attached it to the window frame. Then I, um, I think on that particular window you're looking at the the head angle. I've used angle all the way around. Um, to help seal the the uh, the window into the the container, um, basically that's um, I think it was 65 mil by 65 mil angle. The top piece on that particular window is 75 mil by 75. Um, so the flats of the angle actually go up the inside of the wall. Okay. Inside, which we'll see later on. Um, and then I uh, I made that angle frame to the to to match the window. I think I allowed five mil clearance around the window, um, and then uh, welded the uh, the angle frame in the window in in the hole that I'd cut because I, I I actually made the frame first and then cut the hole to suit the angle. Okay. So I I didn't have to do too much more preparation work once I cut it out. So in effect, if um, you know you're putting windows or doors in in this sort of um, installation, it it does. Uh, to some extent affect the uh, structural integrity of the walls. Well, I guess uh, it does to a certain extent, but yep. that the galvan, I mean the angle up the top is a bit like a gal lintel. Yep. Um, that angle is, I think, is uh, six mil wall thickness, six mil thick, should I say. Um, so uh, putting the angle back in there like that is, uh, there's no flex in that wall now. Yep, yep. Um, Since it's gone back together like that. Um, yeah, so it seemed to work all right. And I believe uh, from our conversation before, we mentioned that um, uh, when you walk around on the, on the tops of these, you know, uh, doing maintenance and stuff, whatever, that uh, the tops uh, on these tend to, to flex a bit underfoot. I, 
I think the wall thickness and the top, the, the, the metal at the top thickness is, is only about two mil thick in these containers. Yep. Um, the strength is definitely in the corners and, and the, the runner along the top edge. Once the walls are welded into that, it, that creates the strength. Okay. If you walk down the middle of the roof and jump up and down, it's a bit like a corrugated roof. You don't do that because you can certainly, yeah, certainly, certainly make a dent in the roof. So um, that that's a consideration uh, that needs to be looked at if people are going to bury these containers. Well, the sheet metal is definitely isn't isn't, yeah. isn't load bearing. No, no, that's um, right. It's, yeah. it's just a seal of the container, I guess. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's 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 good, Steve. Um, 40 foot, it's certainly a lot of, um, well not flat panelling, but there's a lot of exposed panelling on there which um, for this type of application is fine, but if you're looking at burying them or half burying them, and that, then you've really got to look at what you're doing uh, to uh, as extra support for these walls. And of course taking into consideration too that soil moves and uh, expands and contracts with moisture, so you sort of um, Got to take that into consideration, uh, not only with probable reinforcing of the container in the ground, but also as a buffer against the ground movement, um, just through moisture levels alone, let alone anything else. So, uh, in your opinion, Steve, would 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 you bury one of these yourself? I mean, obviously, it's going to need a lot more work. Um, I wouldn't. Not that I'm an expert, but I mean. Um, yeah, you know, they've also got a timber floor in them. Yep. Um, I guess it's some sort of marine grade ply. It's about an inch thick. Yep. Or an inch and a half thick, I think. I, I, I can't remember now. Um, when I put the uh, plumbing through the floor. Um, but certainly the rest of the container is made out of black steel, which is just painted with red oxide. So um, if you were to bury that in the soil, you'd certainly have to do a lot more to the steel to protect it because... Uh, my guess is if you've got moisture in the soil, and some soils are fairly acidic as well. That's right, yeah. I'd suggest that you'd end up with a, a severe corrosion problem, particularly a lot of these shipping containers that come off ships, yep. as you know. Um, this one's got its fair share of rust in it um, that needs you know, a fair bit of maintenance doing to it. I haven't even got to that stage yet um, to protect it from further corrosion. Yeah, that, 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 that's a good point, Steve. Um, you now, where these uh, shipping containers come from are more precisely what they'll use for and it's an interesting point you mentioned about um, uh, acidity in the soil as you said it's only black steel and uh, if it's not treated properly um, uh, it doesn't take long for them to rust out okay all right mate uh, that's good um, if we can uh, we'll go up and have a look inside if yep. that's possible thank you that's fine